Welcome back to another episode of Ask the Techies. I'm D. Lee Beard, brought to you once again in high definition. <laughs> um, hopefully this is uh, your light enjoying this. I'm enjoying it. Um, it's nice to be able to see more pixels of what's happening on the computer screen, and hopefully that helps you to understand what it is I'm doing. Um, high definition, we do have a you know, an actual high definition. A lot of you may be doing this in sort of a widescreen version, but we've actually got a true high definition version that's compatible with the Apple TV. And if you go to our website, askthetechies.com, you'll find if you click on the video, uh, you'll see a link here for click here to download an HD version. And then you can have the really, you know, like it's probably about 400 me megabytes file. So it's large, so be aware of that. But if you really want us on high definition, you can do that and uh, really see it, everything very clear on your TV in your living room, uh, particularly with your something like an Apple TV. Um, or uh, TiVo probably does that as well, I think. Anyway, um, so anyway, you can get the high, de high def version. We will be having an iTunes and Miro compatible version. Uh, a feed that you can subscribe to for the high def version if you want. So you can switch if you want to. We do have three versions. Really, our two versions, MP4 and the H.264, they're really the same. Um, but we will have another one that we'll label as Apple TV HD. So you'll understand that that'd be the one for a high def if you really want big pixels. But hopefully, the one you've got is working. That's good. Uh, if you have any other needs, you want different formats, let us know. Well, let's dive right into viewer questions. Uh, first off, is a question we're actually going to pick up from last week. See, last week I had said that I didn't know of any way to take a Windows computer and be able to control a Mac somewhere down the hall or another floor of the building or something. There actually is a way with VNC, and we've talked about this before, where you can actually connect to another computer, control the desktop, click on icons, go to system preferences, things like that. Um, and the way you do that is through turning on a certain feature in the Mac. Let me show you how you do that. Um, first of all, you go to the Mac. System Preferences, and then when System Preferences pop up, you go to Sharing, and then in Sharing, what you want to check is Remote Management. So you turn that on, and then it gives you here on all local users can access this computer to blah, blah, blah. You can check the things that you want them to do. I'm just going to say OK, because the key thing I'm wanting to turn on is VNC, and that's right here in Computer Settings. So when you click on that, you'll see a window here, and it shows VNC viewers may control screen with a password. This is what you have to do in order to enable VNC to work with the Mac. So you check that, and then you come over here, and you type in uh, what password do we want the people to be able to access this computer. So you come in, and you type one, and you type, and you type, and you type. You want a long one. For security reasons, if you're making your computer available for people to be able to access your computer and control it remotely, you want to make sure this is not something that can easily be hacked. In fact, you'll probably want to turn this off as soon as whatever you're wanting to share your computer for is done, you want to turn it off and then just turn it back on the next time for someone else. And maybe even change the password each time. Depending on which VNC program you use, you could be running into some security issues regarding someone being able to mm, sniff out your password. So be aware of that because not all VNC stuff is, is as secure as others. Um, so changing the password each time it maybe is not a bad idea, particularly if you're in a corporate environment. Um, anyway, so you have VNC viewers make control screen, you click OK. And I'm going to actually cancel on this because I don't really want to do that on this computer because I, through the magic of Parallels software, which allows you to uh, run Windows, there we go, on a computer. In fact, I'll just go ahead and go to View Full Screen and click OK. So now I'm turning this computer into a Windows computer. And what I'm using right here is a program called Tight VNC. Uh, that's just one that you can download. It's free. It doesn't cost you anything. It's open source type of software. It's available for Linux and Windows, by the way. Um, then what you can do is go to the Start menu, go to your All Programs. There we go. And then my happens to be right over here, Tight VNC. I'm going to choose Tight VNC Viewer. Then it pulls up, and <clears throat> when you get this window in here, uh, it's going to ask you for the VNC server. That's basically the IP address of the computer that you're trying to connect to. So type in the IP address of what you want, and then click the Connect button. Okay, I'm going to type in mine. Oh, click in. Give me a minute here. And 
And then once it connects, you basically just type in your password for that computer. Remember the really long one that we put in on the Mac? That's what you type in. Not any particular user's password, the one you set up in the sharing preferences. Now the computer you're connecting to does have to be awake and, you know, booted up in order for you to be able to take control of it. Um, and then basically you see I'm connected here now. And I can scroll down. You can see, see uh, here's my computer, my Mac that I'm connecting to. In fact, I can go up here to the Apple menu and I can go System Preferences. There we go. And I can do things like uh, show people how to turn on sharing <laughs> and also to turn it off. And uh, I'm close out. So that's how you can troubleshoot someone else's computer if they're using a Mac and you have a PC. And to close out the connection, all you have to do is come up here to the upper right-hand corner, click the X to close out the session, doop, and then you're set. And then we just go ahead and uh, close out of the Windows session here. We don't really need to have that open right now. Okay, so now you know how to do it. VNC, you can always connect to a Mac. I mean, you could always connect to a Windows computer in the past. Now you can also connect to a Mac. Just make sure that little box is checked and you put in a password in the Mac system preferences. Okay, Ricardo, hopefully that helps you out and hopefully that helps some other people out as well. Woohoo, one down.